guys, so today I'm going to be talking with you about the book The Lost Girls by Holly Corbett, Amanda Pressner, and Jennifer Baggett. And it's a nonfiction book, true story, about these three women who were, uh, one was a roommate in college with another one, and that girl worked with another girl, and they were co-workers and, like, kind of friends, and, um, they all three decided that they were headed towards major life deadlines, like their 30s, and like if they should get married to the boyfriends they were with, and if they should start having babies, and all that good stuff, and decided that it was just a lot of pressure and that they needed to escape for a little bit. And they all pretty much were really into traveling, and so they said, let's travel the world together for a year. All three of them lived in New York City, so they started out in New York City, and then they went to South Africa, then Kenya, India, Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, Myanmar, Bali, New Zealand, and then they ended up in Australia, and then they went back to New York from there. Part of the reason was to, that they went on this year-long journey was to escape. Part of it was they figured if they did start hitting those deadlines, this would, they wouldn't ever be able to take a trip like this. And another part of it was to try to clear their head and get some clarity and, like, not feel so lost to try to, like, figure things out, pretty much. Unfortunately, by the end of the Lost Girls book, they didn't figure out life's epiphanies. I find with a lot of travel books, when people go on these long journeys, that they think that they're going to have some kind of epiphany and, like, some kind of, like, mode of clarity, and it changes their whole life. Um, I even heard Ashley Reader on Climb the Stack, she actually said something like this, because she does a lot of traveling, and she's like, I always expect to have, like, a moment of epiphany, but I'm just like, man, those are some nice rocks, those are some cool buildings, and that's kind of what happened with the Lost Girls, um, they were very aware of their problems that they left behind, but they didn't have any, like, sense of direction when they were done like they thought they would. And, if anything, they had less direction, because once on the road, they're like, maybe I don't want to go back to New York, maybe I want to keep going. So I thought that was interesting that they didn't have that mode of clarity, but it didn't, it didn't mean the trip wasn't worthwhile. So, my thoughts on the book, I did like the book a lot. The only things I didn't like, really, were that they were, at first, I couldn't tell the narrators apart, until I went and did a, like a little outside the book digging and like looked up their pictures and familiarized myself with their names to their faces so that kind of helped but I know a lot of people on Goodreads had that problem too where they like didn't know who was narrating a lot of the time and it was long it was over 500 pages but it wasn't like there was extra junk that they could have cut out it was just a long trip and like three people taking a long trip together put into one book, so it got, like, kind of long to get through just because it was over 500 pages, and I know for some people that's just, like, two days or a day's worth of reading, but for me it was a little bit long, but it didn't seem long. Well, I really like the book, when I read travel books about places that I wouldn't normally go to, I like to, that's my way of experiencing going to them, because there's some places that I really want to go, but there's other places that I have no desire to go to, and they actually went to a lot of those places, so it's like I'm on that journey with them, and I really like that felt like a good travel book. Like, there's a certain feeling that I get from, like, a good travel book, and when it catches you up in it, and makes you feel like you're there, and I, I got that from this book, and I really liked that. The whole book was really hopeful to me. I thought maybe reading it I would be, like, depressed and think that I could never do something like that, and I do have you two, my two best friends, and I was like, oh man, I wonder if these girls are gonna want to kill each other, but they didn't actually know each other all that well. Um, they kind of had, like, one friend in the middle of them that knew both of them, um, but they didn't know each other that well, and the two that were friends with the one in the middle, they didn't actually meet that much before they met, but they, the whole time, I mean, they had, like, a little bit of ups and downs, but it wasn't that bad, and they got along really well, they, they kept referring to each other as, like, each other's left and right arm by the end, like, it was weird to ha not have the other person there, and it just brought them really close together, and they decided after this book that they were going to every year take a trip together uh, for the rest of their lives, no matter, like, if they had husbands or babies or whatever. And I thought that was really cool and inspiring. And also, the goal itself of taking a year off of your life and traveling was also inspiring, because I thought when I read it, like I said, that it was going to seem like it was too daunting and depressing, but I definitely got bit by the travel bug when I was reading this and just was like, oh, I want to go here and here, and I, and, but the books made it seem doable and like it's a possibility. Another kind of bonus thing about the book that I didn't, I wasn't expecting would come up while reading it was they talked about some women's issues in different countries, like when they were in Kenya, they volunteered at a all-girls, like, boarding school, and they talked about how a lot of the girls are there because 
they would have to walk to other schools that were further away, and a lot of them would get beaten up and raped on the way, and that in Kenya, there's no real punishment for rape, because it's not, there's, women are property there. And so it makes you really think about how lucky you are if you're an American or in a, a democratic, kind of not third world country. It makes you definitely feel how lucky you are as a woman to have the rights and laws and stuff that protect you. And I thought that was a nice extra thing. And it also kind of illuminated some of like the, that women aren't completely powerless while they travel. They actually ran into an incident at one point where uh, they were against this cab driver that was like hopped up on drugs and was threatening to like take their stuff from them and not let them out of the cab and like there are three chicks and they always teach you when you're traveling that women are kind of weaker and they have to like watch themselves all the time but they handled their own pretty well even though it was kind of a dangerous situation and so I thought that was cool that like it was kind of it was kind of a pro-women book without being, like, heavily feminist. Leslie, I would recommend this book to you. I think you would probably like it, but you might find it a little bit long. But it is cool, because it is cool to read about places that you never thought about visiting before, and I think you would like it, especially because it's such a nice tale of friendship. I think you would like it as long as you can get over the fact that it's 500 plus pages. So as far as my future book two plans, uh, I had said last time after I did this review that I was going to start my own channel and do booktube stuff on there, but I've actually decided that I'm going to get rid of all my past booktube reviews and not start another channel. Maybe in the future I will. I'm just kind of like not feeling the idea. I just decided to forego booktube for now and I'm going to take down all my booktube videos. So that's my thought on Lost Girls and I have no clue what I'm going to be reading next. Uh, I took so long to read that book that I kind of like burnt myself out on books right now. I mean I got it at the end of October and I just returned it Wednesday which is the middle of January now. I actually didn't even start reading the book till December 2nd. So it's way overdue. I renewed it a couple times, but it was due December 22nd. That deadline came and went, and so now it's overdue, but I will pay my fines. Anyway, not important. I don't know what I'm going to be reading next, so I'm kind of taking a breather from the reading world right now. But I love you guys, and I'll see you later. Bye!